sure you're supposed to get extra credit for getting on the show, so you're welcome. Yeah, yeah we appreciate you taking our calls. We actually <laughs> yeah. get an A in the class if we get on. You're going to yeah. get an A in the class just for calling into this show? Yeah. I, I, I already have problems with your school. Yeah, wait. I, I mean, also, what school has an apologetics class? I mean, I'm all for critical uh, thinking, but... Christian it, school. Yeah. The, oh, okay. Yeah. Is this a Christian high school? No college, not even a Christian college, is going to give you an A for calling to talk to my dumbass. Well, <laughs> no, 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 it's high school. I thought I went to a Christian high school. I didn't learn any apologetics. Bullshit. All right, so what do you got for us? Well, we, uh, in our apologetics class, the main point is just kind of not debating atheists, but just, you know, the causality of how to not prove God's existence, but argue it, you know? Yeah. So really what, I mean, I'm sure you hear this from almost every caller, but we just want to talk to you about like objective truth and see what, you know, your ideas on moral absolutes are. Oh, wait a minute. Uh, Those are two different topics. Yeah, I was going to say. Um, I was about to ask you to clarify the first one. But. Yeah, we, we would need clarify, clarification on what you mean by objective truth, but morality is a separate issue. Okay, and well, and I don't have and you also that, said and you also said moral absolutes and I don't advocate for moral absolutes I advocate for objective morality that is situational. Well, well, that's what we're saying. You know, okay. we're taught that morals come from God and they're God breathed, and we just want to know what your how your explanation for the fact you know as a as a people race, there's only you know. Point zero 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 one percent of people that think murder is okay, and those people are, you know, serial killers or well, so maybe. Forth. But the, here's the issue: let's assume for a second, without getting off, off into all the complicated philosophical debates, let's assume that morality is in fact what God says. How do I know what right. God says? Well, you, the idea is that you're created by God, so those morals are implanted in you through God and you How can, the Holy Spirit. So first of all, we know that, I mean, you can pick an extreme example like murder, but you can pick other things where we disagree on what the moral condition is or what yeah. the moral resolution is. So there are lots of people who hold lots of different views. And it, it, if we want to figure out, like Jamie thinks this is right and I think it's wrong. Yeah, yeah now, murder. either one of us can claim that this is what God has impressed upon my heart, and now we have no way of solving it. So what religions offer as moral systems um, aren't actually systems, they're edicts. And we know that what religions have thought of as moral and immoral throughout history has changed. And for example, with, with Judaism and Christianity that would point to the Torah and the Christian Bible as, as the foundation that we can all look at, um, there's loads of problems there, including, you know, hey, slavery's okay, or um, it's okay to run around slaughtering people, or even God commanded to slaughter these people. There's no way to prove or demonstrate to anybody else what God actually thinks. The most you could get to is, here's what I think God thinks, and then you'd have to acknowledge that you're a fallible being who might be mistaken about mm -hmm. what God thinks, because you definitely think the other person is mistaken about what God thinks. This is why secular moral systems are vastly superior, superior because they come up with a system that allows you to remove as much bias as possible and to consider the consequences of actions with respect to discrete goals that aren't subject to opinion. So if the goal is, hey, we want to create a society that is generally healthier, this step either objectively leads to a healthier society or it doesn't. And there's no opinion involved in it. Right. Well, I, I get that, and I understand where you're coming from, but at the end of the day, it's one of those things where you can point out almost any moral that is major, and the only ones that we'll disagree on are small things well, that aren't even moral. Okay, They're more so, choices that you make in life. Sorry, just to be clear, God is all-powerful or as powerful as a being can be, right? Yeah. And, yeah. and if God impressed upon everyone... God's moral system, right? He's written his code on your heart. Wouldn't you expect well, right, but this every is, right, this single is, human you know, being, every person that God knew in their mother's womb before they were born to have it come to exactly the same conclusions? Or is there something that's on earth that occurs naturally that can undo God's work on our hearts? 
Well, but what you're doing here is you're assuming that God is more controlling us and didn't give us free will. No, we're going no. with your model that God has implanted his moral code on humans' hearts. And you are going to, oh, look at something like murder. There's only a tiny fraction of corrupted people. Well, even if there was only one person, mm -hmm. what happened to what God wrote on his heart is Jamie's yeah. question. Yeah. But the thing is, when we talk about other things, like, for example, uh, I don't know specifically what your moral views are. Um, is it okay to, for a man to have sex with another man? Is that morally permissible? Um, God does not condone it, but... Does he condemn it? Yes. Okay, so, so your view is that God condemns this, meaning that God views male-male sex as immoral? Yes. And you realize that you are now in the minority in the Western world on thinking that, right? Yes. Okay, so let's stop pretending that disagreements about morality uh, are just, you know, hey, here's one psychopath that we're not going to even answer Jamie's question about. Yeah. There are real moral issues that we fundamentally disagree on. How do we figure out who's right? It comes down to... I, I really hate bringing this up, but you, the faith that you have in a religion, or in your case, sure. the lack of a How does that solve any disagreement? If I'm trying well, to figure out what God wants for me, how can I do that? Or what God wants, what, what God believes is moral, how can I do that? Is there any position you couldn't take merely on faith? Like, couldn't I just say I take it on faith that there's nothing wrong with two dudes having sex? I mean, yes, obviously. Okay, so now okay. we both have just taken something on faith. That doesn't, doesn't make it true, though, you know? Sure. Thank you. It doesn't yeah. make it true. So what I'm saying is that there's no reason to think this is immoral, and you're mm -hmm. saying that there is a reason, and that reason is faith, and then you acknowledge that faith doesn't make it true. Yeah. So what foundation do you have that could actually make it true? What God has taught us. You see, it's... Okay, I'm, but I'm not saying that and faith you, doesn't make it true. I'm saying how, that go ahead. If you take an idea of faith yeah, that isn't I'm going to the same place a again. God breathed word, then that. Okay, is not so faith. to be clear, the thing you're calling God breathed word and the conclusions you're reaching, you believe that they're true because of some evidence other than faith, or you believe that they're true because you have faith that they're true. Are you still basing these conclusions on faith, or is there something else that you're basing these conclusions on? Um, I guess it's faith. Okay, so if there are two people that can use the same method, faith, and come to completely different conclusions, this demonstrates that it's possible for a person to use faith and come to the wrong conclusion. Right? One of them, if there are opposite conclusions, one of them isn't right. How do you figure out yes. which one is correct, given that faith can be wrong? And, and one addendum to that that stays within the realm, because mm -hmm. I don't want to sidetrack it. How can someone who does not share your faith come to that conclusion as well? Um, you guys just try to work it out. And if you, you try to reach a point where you are both on the same understanding. Okay, okay. understanding of... That's not a method. Right. That yeah. saying try to work it out yeah. is not the a is, is, saying try to work it out is no more a pathway to truth than faith is. We're looking for a pathway that yeah. leads us to a, a non-biased, non-subjective, here's here's what the facts say, and here's what we can reasonably conclude. Mm -hmm. What is that? Well, okay. So if you tell me an instance where, you know, gay sex is morally, you know, right, and you have faith upon it, and Wrong. then, you know, obviously I say the opposite. The method of figuring out who is right has nothing to do with the level of faith or anything. Mm -hmm. It's where they get that faith from, where they have read, where it's wrong. If, okay. if faith is flawed, what who difference, do, if faith is back flawed, back. if faith is flawed, what difference does it make where you got it? Like, if I have a ruler that's not accurate, it doesn't make any difference if I bought it at the dollar store or at Sears. It's still not accurate. Meanwhile, the, you're saying, so your view is that two guys having sex is immoral. 
And my view isn't that two guys having sex is moral. It's that there's no demonstration and no reason to think it should be immoral. It may be, in fact, um, amoral, that there's no moral evaluation of this at all. Because why the hell should I care what two guys do if they're not hurting anybody else? There's no demonstration of anything that could reasonably objectable, objected to. The only justification for why religions have an objection to it is because they say God is opposed to it. Not Now... I still have no access to what God says, no way to verify what God says, and when you tell me that this is the conviction that God has put on your heart, you might as well be telling me that, uh, that ghosts come to you tonight and tell you, you know, that uh, you, you shouldn't have sex with dudes. How is it different? Well, you see, um, to, like, if the guys are happy, we don't have, like us people don't have a problem with it. It's just God doesn't approve of it. So Why should, okay. Us. So okay. you don't personally have any objection, but you still view it as immoral. My yeah. thing is, number one, why should anybody give a rat's ass what God thinks about anything until there's a demonstration that there is a God and some reason to care what he thinks? But also, if you don't have a problem with it and yet you're convinced that your God thinks it's immoral, why the hell don't you have a problem with it? Because it's not it's happy. not our place to judge because yeah. we aren't but omnipotent. Did you, did you, you come to a judgment about it? That, oh, I don't really have a problem with it. That is a judgment of whether or not it is immoral, right? Uh, let me, let me, ask, it, let me ask it this way. Because we're judging the moral value of it. We aren't judging okay. the actual people. They're is it your place God to judge the moral value of a thing or not? So, so let's imagine let's imagine that we're all in a room together mm -hmm. and there's one guy over in the corner who you say makes the rules for this room. And his rule is if a dude kisses another dude, I'm going to go punch him. Now, I don't think right. that those should be the rules for this room and I don't think they are the rules for this room and I don't care what that guy thinks or anything else. What you're doing is coming here and you're saying we believe that this guy makes the rules, even though we don't agree with him. And when he comes over and punches you, he's right to do so. Well, no, what you're saying, well, what you're saying is, the guy in the corner of the room says that he's going to punch the guy. So then two dudes make out, and then I'm supposed to go over there and punch him. No, no, no I didn't say anything remotely like that. I yeah. said that you, th if God, if the guy in the corner of the room comes over and punches the two dudes are kissing. Did he do something that was morally right? Well, if he's the one that's the one making the rules, then but he's he not. Tells them about you you can't even demonstrate that there is a guy or why I should care what his rules are. You're actually creating a guy that we, you're basically saying, "Hey, there's somebody who owns this room and these are the rules that we are convinced he wants." Well, you're comparing God to just a guy in a corner of the yes. room. Yes. That, yeah. I mean, as good as your And you know what? That's completely unfair of me because the guy in the corner of the room mm -hmm. can be demonstrated to exist and God can't. I'm giving you way more by making mm -hmm. it an actual guy. So here's the thing. You think that God is against two dudes making out, right? Yes. yes. Do you think it's right for God to be against two dudes making out? Yeah. So when you said before that you didn't agree with God, you were lying. We never said we didn't agree. We said it wasn't our place we, to judge. You said you said you didn't have a problem with it. Yeah. This is you. No, no, no. no. We said we said we don't have a problem with a guy. We agree that's not right. But if the guy is happy, it's not affecting us. We don't have a problem with it. We're not going to go and. We're, yeah. When we're you say you don't have a problem with it, do you mean you yeah. don't think it's immoral? I, I think they're saying that they think it's immoral, but they're not going to care do or do anything, anything about somebody yeah. being immoral. Is that what you're saying? Yes, because it's not our place to judge others' morals. You mean, oh, do you mean when you say it's not your place to judge, you mean it's not your place to enact or enforce God's law on two dudes making out? Yes. Okay. Well, okay. I mean, there's, it's our duty to whatever, tell people of the word and the truth, but... You, you don't have an God obligation God to God tell God those two dudes that what they're doing is immoral? Yeah. Do you have an obligation to tell those two guys that what they're doing is immoral? Uh, 
I mean, we're not obligated, but I'm sure God would enjoy it if we tried to talk to him. Yeah, you, you seem to be hedging your bets and trying to avoid anything related to God uh, and put all the onus on him. So yeah. demonstrate that there's a God that actually communicated any of this to you and why we should care. Well, because you, well, for us to do that, you guys would have to believe in God's word and obviously you do not. So the only way you can prove God is if we believe in God's word. How do you know it's God's word? And which word are we talking about? Well, yeah, that's a good question. And which God? You can't look at the publication in the Bible and the author is God. I mean, it was written by prophets and God spoke through I agree it was written by humans. I, why are you convinced that, that they are accurately relaying what God thinks? if you have already acknowledged that we can't be confident that anybody is accurately relaying what God thinks. Because of how, uh, act, like how all the books of the Bible go together when how many, like over 40 people wrote it, so like how that happened couldn't have just happened out of chance, like it had to all link to one person it doesn't. Making that happen. So first of all, they don't all go together. There, there are problems and contradictions in different messages, which is how you end up with multiple dev, multiple denominations. But you're claiming that the only way for those books from different authors to have come together with any sort of cohesive thing is if there was a God behind it all. And yet, all these other religions that you would denounce are in similar positions. And I can point to anthologies. Of, of I can point to anthologies. I can point to anthologies of science fiction written by multiple different authors that all stay in the same theme. And over the course of time, if a whole bunch of people who believe something continue to write about what they believe, it's like getting people in the same church to tell the stories about what they believe. There's going to be some differences, but it's going to be cohesive. So your argument for why we can trust that it's God is simply fallacious. How do you demonstrate? that you have any idea what any God has ever said? You take the word on faith. Okay, so we've, we've now circled back around to faith, yeah. right? So you, yeah. hey, Adam, well, we'll use two names that don't include you. Adam has faith that, I don't know, pick your favorite conclusion about God. Barry over here has faith that the opposite is true. When, for example, police are investigating a murder, they'll use one test, right, like a gunpowder test, to figure out if a person was holding a gun. To double check that, to verify, because that test can be wrong, they'll ask witnesses. You have proposed one method of determining what is true, faith. We know that that single method can produce multiple results. We know that interviewing witnesses can produce contradictory stories. What is the second test that we can use to clarify when one person has used faith wrong? Well, like Muslims with their faith and like blowing a bunch of people up. To I mean, we're bringing them to hell. We're, we're, That's there. Is this still a conversation of faith? Yeah, or? I don't know how that was relevant. Yeah. Here's two people. You asked an example of someone like another faith. No, 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 not, not another faith in the sense of another religion. Yeah. Two people are saying that they have... Jamie is pro-dude-on-dude -dude action, and I am against it, and we both say that our positions are based on faith. faith. What is the second thing we could use, because we can't resolve this with faith, mm -hmm. to determine which of us, if either of us, is correct? Actual evidence. Yeah. Okay. So what's the evidence? Yeah that God thinks that dudes shouldn't be doing dudes. Or that they should. The Bible. Yeah. Okay, okay. so given a, a, a more ambiguous questions of the Bible and the way that these things are interpreted, um, I think that it's okay for people to consume shellfish. And Matt thinks that it's not. So given all of the interpretations of the Bible that say, oh, Jesus came and he fulfilled the rules, we don't have to follow them. And interpretations that say, no, we still have to follow the laws of Leviticus. Given that we're both using the source of the Bible, we're both using the Bible as a source, and we're both interpreting it differently, and we support our conclusions with faith, is that method 
reliable if it can produce opposing results. Well, <laughs> we aren't well-versed debaters. You kind of got us in I mean, okay. you know. All right, let me, but, let me do it this way. Yeah. You guys are willing to take what the Bible says about homosexuality as if it accurately resembles, re represents what God thinks, right? Yes. So in the Bible where, you know, if a man lies with another man as he lies with a woman, it's an abomination and they're deserving of death. That's, you think the Bible is accurately relaying what God thinks about gay sex, right? Yes. What does God think about slavery? Does God think that women are equal to men? Yes. You, you think God thinks women are equal to men, despite the fact that the Bible well, the, continually puts women in an inferior position, and when it puts dollar or shekel amounts, the man is worth between a third and a half as, or twice as much. You know, hey, it's twenty shekels for a male and ten shekels for a female. And Paul says that he won't permit a, a woman to have any authority over a man. And the man is to be the head of the household, as Christ is the head of the church. And yet, you think that God thinks that women are equal. Is there any voice, voice in the Bible that you can point to that contradicts all those other ones that show that women aren't to be viewed as equal? Well, when Paul is referring to women being inferior, that's only within the church, not okay. outside right. of the church. Okay, but that's still not equal. If they're not equal in the church, then they're not equal. But thank you for cherry picking the one that you've heard an apologetic for. What about all the other ones that demonstrate that there's no verse that shows that women are to be considered equal, and yet you guys think that God thinks that men and women are equal? What's your justification for that? Uh, and don't go with faith, because we're now to the second tier, which was supposed to be the Bible. Yeah. Love your neighbor as thyself. Okay. That doesn't, that doesn't indicate whether God thinks that your neighbor is equal to you. Yeah, and by the way... I have very strong feelings for my cats, but I am more important than they are. Specifics override, Sorry, specifics override the general, and that verse doesn't mention women. Yeah. That's a general, which can mm -hmm. be overrided by the specifics. You, you've come to the conclusion that God thinks that men and women are equal, and I'm wondering what that's based on, because it's not based on the Bible. In the Bible, it says all... Men are made in the image of God. Yeah, men. So if they're all, it's the same. They, well, men is just general, like everyone. Like he refers to men as the human race. Mankind. Doesn't, Mankind. doesn't say anything about men and women being equal. Yeah. And but if so, all men are made in the image of God, so what? they all have the... Okay, do, does that mean that Jews are equal to non-Jews? Because... That's countered by the fact that the Jews were God's chosen people. The other people weren't equal with Jews. There were completely different rules. If you had, if you had a Jewish slave, you had to let him go after seven years. But if you had a non-Jewish slave, they were your slave forever, apart from the Jubilee. You guys, you guys are looking at this, and, and you have your view of what God thinks. And I applaud you, because in, in, the, in some sense, you're saying, I don't care what the Bible actually says about men and women being equal. I think men and women should be equal, and so I think God thinks that. But you have no way to demonstrate that, and the thing that you would point to contradicts your position. So now you're even doubly screwed. You can't just point to faith. It's, oh, it's faith plus what the Bible says. Well, what the Bible says is your guy's view is wrong. Yeah. I mean, really, guys, you guys are coming to conclusions about what is right or wrong, you know, based on a kind of feeling about it. And then afterwards, it seems like you're saying, well, that's what God wants. Oh, it's in the Bible. And then when we go to, well, faith isn't a good method. Well, trying to figure out what's in the Bible isn't a good method. You've still come to the same conclusion. Do you ever think maybe that you've got ideas about what's right or wrong because you experience the world and see what harms people and what helps people and things that do what we would call good, right? Feeding the hungry, that's called good because you can see that hungry people need food rather than, oh yes, I remembered that in passage whatever, it says that that's good. Do you think maybe well, you I, have a moral compass but, that's yeah, separate but, from the Bible? Were, when you were six years old and your mother's talking to you, she, she doesn't tell you when you're six years old, don't go kill someone. When you're six years old, you just know that... Actually, I'm pretty sure I'd been fed the Ten Commandments. I'm pretty sure I'd been fed the Ten Commandments long before I was six because I walked down the aisle at a revival at five to accept Jesus into my heart. 
So I'm sure it took place before six, but when I point that out, you'll probably just go back to infants. Um, the fact is you are taught correct behavior from the people who raise you, and they may or may not be correct. And to get back to one other thing, you guys think that God is against gay sex. I'm assuming you think that God's also against gay marriage. Yeah. Okay, so I don't think either of you are old enough to vote yet, but if you were gonna vote, to allow same-sex marriage or disallow same-sex marriage, which way would you vote? Um, I would probably vote to not allow it. Yeah, because that makes you consistent with what you think God wants. And yet a while ago, you were like, hey, it's not our job to, to make moral judgments. But here's the problem with religious moral systems is that even when you say that you're all in favor of men and women being equal, or that it's not your job to judge, uh, it's God's job, job to judge. What you believe about the morality of a situation informs your actions, which means you, despite saying that, hey, if two, what two dudes do, that's between them and God, that argument should encourage you to permit same-sex marriage as a freedom that anybody can avail themselves of and to you know, kill them all and let God sort them out sort of thing, but instead, you're gonna legislate against this, which mm. means you are in fact siding with the thug that you accept. God is this mafia boss thug who has repugnant views that he doesn't have to demonstrate, and you guys not only buy into it, but you're willing to legislate that onto others. Now do you see a problem? Well, I don't think we should have to make it okay for uh, people to do what God condones. So, like, if um, he thought, doesn't want them being together, we shouldn't be making it okay for them to do it because it's going should to... Should we make God. it not okay using laws in governments that are enforced? To be clear. Do you repeat? So, so uh, for example, there, there were for a long time anti-sodomy laws in Texas and many other states, right? So laws that made it illegal, right? Um, the uh, uh, incident that led to the case that eventually led to the law being overturned was police officers were pursuing someone, that person ran through a stranger's house, the police officers followed them through that stranger's house, that stranger's house contained two people engaged in uh, anal sex or, or sodomy right, and the police arrested them, okay? So if you're saying, oh, we shouldn't make it okay, do you mean, oh, anti-sodomy laws, we should arrest or otherwise, you know, enforce a penalty of law on people that break God's word? The government acts on existences of sodomy or eating shellfish or whatever it is, whichever sin you wanna talk about. Well, in the Constitution, it talks about like how people are able to do whatever makes them happy. Well, but, like, but is that is that okay with really. God? Well, I mean, it, but it, also it, in the Bible, it says that all governments are appointed by God. So, mm -hmm. what justification could you ever have for rejecting any decision from the government? You, you can't you, really object against the government. Sure you can. We're saying yeah, it happens all the that time. Our government is formed specifically, our, our government is founded on people who objected to another government and includes the, 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 the provisions that allow you to petition the government for a redress of grievances. It is a participatory government, which means I can run for stuff, I get to vote, everything else. And yet you've chosen to follow a book that says you, all, all governments are appointed by God, and so you couldn't have any grounds for objecting. For example, is does God think abortion is wrong? Yes. Do you think abortion is wrong? Yes. And do you think it should be illegal? Yes. What should the punishment be if somebody has an abortion? Well, it can't be regulated. I mean, yeah. Yes. It actually, yes, it it's already regulated. What, the yeah. hell, what do you mean it can't be regulated? If somebody commits an abortion, do you think that's murder? Yes. So what should the punishment be if somebody commits an abortion? 
I should say has and not commits, but I'm playing into your game. Or performs. So, so what should the punishment be for someone who has an abortion? They should be charged with manslaughter because in the womb, it's still a living being. Okay. okay. Well, what is your foundation for holding that view when the Bible says nothing about abortion, does not hold fetuses as co-equal to human beings, and does not prescribe a penalty for forced miscarriage that is equivalent to murder? Well, there's evidence that when the, the fetus is only like four weeks old, that it, it's alive and it's a human. Okay, stop. Not in the stop, word of stop, God. Stop, stop. Okay, first of all, it's alive from the get-go and it's, de it's genetically human. It, it, it doesn't matter the weeks. This isn't about when, when or whether it's human. It's about your foundation for saying that it is wrong and should be punishable by law for someone to have an abortion. And I'm asking you, because your primary basis is faith and your secondary basis is the Bible, what in the, when the Bible does not support your view, what does the Bible say about abortion? It does the same thing about abortion. Correct. Does what, does it say, what does it say about the worth of a fetus relative to a human, a, a living human? Nothing. No, no, you're wrong. No, you're wrong. It, it specifically includes things that don't put them equal. As a matter of fact, up until one month after they're born, they do not count in a census. And by the way, when you're taking the census, you only count the males, you don't count the females. So we're back to those things not being equal. Everything about this book is, from my view, foundationally immoral. But my point is that, oh, well, not everything. I don't want to be hyperbolic. Hey, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm okay with some of it. Whether or not something is actually immoral can't be decided just because it's in the book you believe or just on based on faith. You have to point to something else. But furthermore, from what you've said, from your perspective, things said in this book, if you think about them, you should also come to that conclusion because it disagrees with you as violently as it disagrees with Matt. In particular on issues of abortion, it says nothing about it, you find it immoral. You are currently in disagreement with the Bible, the Word of God. Who's right, you or God? God. Yeah. Should abortion be illegal? Yes. Look, no, it's, we're not, even if the Bible doesn't talk about abortion, and even if it does say you can't be in a census when, unless you're older than one month and it only takes males, whatever, when it says you don't count as a human field. for the census. Okay, you aren't consistent. All right. Well, I mean, the Bible says that, not me. Sorry. To clarify. Sorry, go, go on. Well, I mean, it was, I was just going to say the same thing. You know, the Bible says not to kill. I, why do I care what the Bible says at all? We already know it's problematic, we, it, it, it endorses slavery. The Bible endorses slavery, tells you who you can enslave, how much to pay for them, tells that you can beat them as long as they don't die within a couple of days. Why should anyone care what the Bible says? Well, on that, on slavery, you know, when you take the Old Testament as one of those things where it's all still law, you know, when Jesus came, in, he abolished most of those laws. So, you know, so hang on. So first, by yourself. stop, stop. I'm that. Hold Josh, hold on Jax, I promise you, I'm trying to save you from embarrassing the crap out of yourself. You can't point to the Bible and then say, hey, Jesus came along. Yeah, that Old Testament God was a perverted asshole who was okay with slavery, but Jesus, who is the same God, came along and fixed it. Because do you know what Jesus said about slavery? Actually, there is one. No. Oh, oh that's the right. only thing he said was slaves obey your masters, even the cruel ones, which is fundamentally immoral because the only thing that you should say to a slave is to escape and take everyone with you that you can. You don't give. And if you were Jesus and God was, and you were Jesus and God, and previously you had permitted slavery and given rules for it, or even if those those ancient sheep herders managed to misunderstand what you said. When Jesus shows up, one of the first things out of his mouth is, here's everything that you guys got wrong about what I actually think, and it is wrong to own people as property. Did he say anything remotely like that? If not, 
then you don't get to pretend that Jesus came in to correct misunderstandings in the Old Testament. Right. You kind of got us in a corner that we aren't yeah. getting out of. Yeah, that's my job. But I will say yeah. this, and we're going to try to get on to, to some other callers mm -hmm. before we run out of time. I do appreciate you guys engaging and talking about this. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it's a little sketchy that you're likely to get an A for this conversation. But I will give you an A for your portion of it uh, with, with us mm -hmm. uh, because a lot of other people aren't willing to engage at all. Mm. Yeah, we appreciate your time as well. Yeah. Yeah, Thanks, cool. guys. Thank you. Feel free to call uh, Talk Heathen as well. Yeah. I think we could keep having this one. They might not beat you up as much as, as I'm likely to. But, you know. Yeah. Anyway, thanks, guys. I'm nicer on that show. I'm wrong. Good luck with the grades. Yeah.